It's been a few days since macOS 26 Tahoe was released, the dust has mostly settled, and for those who make music on their Apple Macintosh computers wondering if it's safe to update, well, I have some good news for you. First off, a massive thank you to not only the thousands of people who watched this video I released a few days back about the release of macOS 26 Tahoe, but to the hundreds of you who left comments sharing your experiences with using third-party plugins and hardware after installing the update. While reading through and replying to your comments, it quickly became clear that people were having far fewer issues than originally thought. So I thought I'd dive in, test out some instrument plugins, some effect plugins, even some DAWs to see what works in GarageBand on a Mac running macOS 26. I should point out that this is purely just for entertainment value. If you have any reservations about updating to macOS 26 yourself, are in the middle of an important project, or are not sure that the gear and software you rely on will work after updating, then please don't try this at home. I'm going to refer to Sweetwater's excellent macOS 26 compatibility list here, and at the very top is a DAW that a surprising amount of people were curious about in the comments section of that previous video I talked about, Ableton. Now, I don't really use Ableton, I don't have the full fat paid version installed, but I did install Ableton Live 12 Lite, that's the free version, and yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing, but it installed and opened just fine and seems to work exactly as it should. If there are any Ableton users watching who have updated to macOS 26, please leave a comment and give a more in-depth review of how the DAW is performing on Tahoe. Arturia also state that macOS 26 Tahoe is not currently supported. Now, I'm recording the voiceover for this video with an Arturia Minifuse 4, and comedy scotch accent aside, everything sounds as it should, and I can access the Arturia Control Center program with no problems as well. I'm using an Arturia Microlab to demo the instrument plugins for this video, and that works exactly the same way it did on the previous version of macOS and Arturia's excellent Analog Lab 5 loads up in GarageBand with zero issues and works as expected. Surprisingly, AudioKit's free King of FM synth, which is first and foremost an iOS audio unit that the developer just decided to make available for Mac users but not officially support, loads up and works as normal too. releases alpha and free monolith synth also load and work smoothly. As does Lander's samples plugin. And Moog's Model D, Model 15 and Animog Z instruments are fine as well. Back on Sweetwater's compatibility list, native instruments state that their hardware and software are not supported on macOS 26, and this was the first time I ran into any issues. In complete control, I wasn't able to complete a scan for plugins and compatible sounds, as the scanning plugin just kept crashing. I don't have the full version of Contact 8, but if you do and you rely on it, you may want to hold off from updating for now. I am going to try deleting and reinstalling Complete Control and seeing if that fixes anything, but for now, yeah, this one just doesn't work, unfortunately. If you use Spitfire libraries, all of their plugins seem to work just fine. I was able to load up and use the BBC Symphony Orchestra and a few other standalone instruments I have just fine.
and you vital lovers out there will be pleased to hear that it loads and works with zero problems. Now that's far from a comprehensive list of all instrument plugins available at the moment. But besides contact not playing ball, everything else works as normal. And I mean, that's pretty good going, I think. It was a similar story with every effect plugin I tried as well. In fact, I didn't come across a single effect plugin that didn't work in GarageBand on macOS 26. Every Baby Audio plugin, all Kalem Audio plugins, all Clevgrind effects, all Isotope plugins, though I did need to re enter my licenses for each of these, which was a bit of a pain. Apart from that, though, everything just works. macOS 26 Tahoe gives a huge visual overhaul to your Mac's operating system, but it doesn't seem to change much under the hood, particularly where audio production stuff is concerned. Now, don't just blindly take my word for it. It's probably far more sensible to play it safe, keep your eyes on Sweetwater's macOS compatibility list, and only update when the companies whose products you use give the go-ahead. Based on my findings though, I don't think you'll have to wait very long. Let me know your thoughts on macOS 26 and if and when you plan to update down in the comments. Give that like button a good hard slap if you found this video helpful and watch this video next for more info on some of macOS Tahoe's pitfalls.